everybody to Harlem fucking Globetrotters. Shit's getting serious right now. We have got a massive couple of games coming up, as you can see from the fixture list there on the right. First of all, we face Chelsea in the Champions League semi-final, away at Stamford Bridge in the first leg. And then after that, in between the two games with Chelsea, we go to Strasbourg. We can wrap up the title in that game. We will speak a little bit more about that later, about what we might be doing for that game, because we've got to give the priority here to the Chelsea fixtures. Um, this is absolutely huge. Chelsea currently third in the Premier League. A very, very capable side and definitely a step up from the Manchester United team that we have just beaten. You can see that they're five points clear of Manchester United with two games in hand on them. So this is definitely stepping up to another level. If we take a look at their team, I think uh, everybody knows these players, but these are something else. Lukaku is obviously their main goal threat. He's got 30 goals this season. Just incredible strength and speed. Brilliant finishing uh, ability. Going to be a real handful. Perhaps even more so than Cristiano Ronaldo was in the last round. And then behind him, typically, they've got Kai Havertz playing in there. Superb playmaker. Brilliant first touch. Brilliant vision. Really composed on the ball. Setting up those chances for Lukaku. And he's joined by a very, very similar looking player in Mason Mount. Absolutely fantastic as well. 15 goals and 7 assists to his name this season. He is going to be a real danger. And just like Manchester United, we know that Chelsea are very, very strong through the middle of the field. So here N'Golo Kante, obviously one of the best defensive midfielders in the game. 19 tackling, 20 teamwork, 20 work rate, 18 anticipation, 20 stamina. Just gets everywhere over the field. Superb at winning the ball back. And if we were to compare him to our own Adrissa Gay, we can see here that he is clearly the better player. Um, as much as Adrissa Gay has really, really helped us this season in, in giving balance to our midfield, and he's been crucial in the last round against Manchester United as a defensive midfielder for us, you can see they are... Similar in terms of their characteristics, but N'Golo Kanti just a far superior, superior player. He's joined by Kovacic there in the, uh, in the midfield. And then Thiago Silva, what a centre-back. Um, physically, now starting to lack a little bit. Hopefully, Icardi might be able to get something out of him with his pace. But in terms of just his ability, his mental ability, game awareness, and the technical ability is phenomenal. Um, alongside Thiago Silva, we've got Rhys James, who is probably still improving in this save game. Um, maybe, we, maybe we would think that in uh, real life he's actually better than this, but a very, very capable centre-back. And Inacio, who also looks a very, very good young centre-back, but maybe... If these are the players that are going to play, I cannot believe they are. Surely Antonio Rudiger is going to be in. So you can see, again, excellent uh, central defender. He will certainly be playing alongside Silver. I have no doubt about that. Um, and then if we look out on the, uh, the, the wing-back positions, again, I don't think uh, Callum Hudson-Odoi is going to be their wing-back for these games. But again, a good solid option. And Aspilicueta, the Spaniard, probably very similar to Kante. Superb mentally, um, excellent at that ball winning job. He's going to be a very, very good solid defensive option for them. Perhaps not looking so dangerous uh, going forward. I think he'll be the right back and I think Ben Chilwell is going to be their left back. And you can see with Chilwell again. Um, probably a little bit like our left backs, very, very solid, but uh, without being truly exceptional in too many areas. Um, so it could be very similar to the Manchester United games in that 
they kind of offer us something we can get out of them on the wings. Uh, I I think that l with uh, with Silva and Rudiger at centre back, we might be able to get something out of them in terms of pace with balls in behind. So that's really going to suit the way that we're playing at the moment with Icardi. Um, but it might be the same as we did against Manchester United, looking to avoid these central areas and attack them down the wings where they just have their wing backs, no other players obviously, and that might allow us to get in behind this back three. If we look at what our analysts say about uh, Chelsea, if we look at the next opponent, so they are playing a Gagan press style where every time they lose the ball, they are going to be right on us. But if we look here, 45% of their defensive actions are basically inside their own area down in that, that that final part of the field so they're defending very very deep winning the ball back quickly with a gagan press and then looking to counter attack so again i kind of feel that that will play into our balance mentality the way we've got our our team set up um just to uh keep the midfielders back a little bit and avoid those counter-attacks. Um, so the only question I've got is whether we go with Idrissa Gay and move him into a defensive position um, or if we play with the 10. I think we've got to play with Idrissa Gay again because of the two number 10s that they're playing with Havertz and Mason Mount. I think we've got to have somebody there. So that's likely what we're going to be doing. Um, before we move on to the first game, Let's just have a look at how things have gone since you were last here. Since we beat Manchester United in the second leg, if you didn't see the last episode, um, Lionel Messi just making the difference in both legs. We have won all three of our games. We're now on a fantastic winning run, you can see. Um, we beat Marseille, first of all, 3-1 in the league. This was huge, a big derby game. Um, certainly one of the obstacles that we had to try and overcome on our way to being French champions. So here a really good first half performance. 3-0 up at half time. Icardi getting another goal. He has been red hot since getting his two goals against Manchester United. He has just been red hot again. Um, we can see if we have a quick look at him now. He's up to 32 goals for the season. 30 of those in the league. Um, absolutely sensational now he's back in the team. And Neymar came back from injury in this one, which was good because Mbappe picked up an injury after the Manchester United game. And Neymar has also been on fantastic form. You can see he now has 15 goals this season. And we are going to be hoping that he can take that form into the Chelsea games. So one for Icardi, two for Neymar. Really, really good performance. Messi was rested for this game after being shattered after Manchester United. So it was great to get him back to full fitness. And we then went away to Angers, a team that gave us problems at home earlier in the season. And you can see here, we, um, we, we played a little bit of a rotated side, but we again came out easy winners, 3-0. They did not even have a shot in the entire game. Um, two superb strikes from Gini Wijnaldum from outside the area. And then Neymar in the second half, finishing it off. Um, really, really pleasing the way the team came together for this one. And then in our last game against Lom, we actually rested the entire team at home in preparation for Chelsea. We played. Uh, we did play Icardi because, uh, well, we don't have any other strikers. Mbappe injured. Neymar was back in just to come back and uh, get his fitness but we were able to take both of those off early on the rest of the team was completely rotated you can see Diallo started at center back um, Carrera started at, at right back and Herrera and Verratti were just able to get their match fitness right back up again Verratti now close to being um, match fit and um, it was nice to see Rafinha get a goal here uh, he performed really, really well. A goal and assist for him. And uh, Danilo Pereira, who has also been 
uh, struggling with injuries all season, came off the bench and he got one as well. So it was a really nice, easy victory, allowed us to rest all of our uh, most important players ahead of this Manchester United game. And uh, really, we're heading into this now, just looking very, very comfortable. Um, again, if we can just avoid defeat at Strasbourg in the next league game, we are champions. But um, that might be a bit more tricky than we're, than we're thinking, because I'm certainly going to prioritise the Chelsea games. But we'll see what happens there. For now, the most important thing is to go forward and uh, get ourselves into this Chelsea game. So we will be back in just a moment when everything is set up and uh, we'll show you how we're going to approach this one. So welcome back. Here we are. We are ready to get into this game. Champions League semi-final first leg. You can see how we're set up here. We have gone with Adrissa Gay as the defensive midfielder, trying to look after Mason Mount and Kai Havertz, along with the two defenders. Um, and we are going to get Messi following Cesar Aspilicueta. And Neymar, who is starting ahead of Mbappe, is going to follow Rhys James. And that is with the idea here that, uh, sorry if I go back to tactics, that is with the idea here that Neymar just come in, uh, just now back to full fitness after injury. And Mbappe just coming back off an injury. Um, they're competing for the same spot. I cannot drop Icardi. And Neymar for the last three games has just been absolutely sensational. So we will leave Mbappe possibly as our little secret weapon if we need his pace to get in behind. Um, apart from that, Hakimi is starting at right back. Nicolas Soule, as we know, is injured. He's nowhere near back ready yet. So um, I would normally be a little bit concerned of, of Hakimi on the defensive side of things. But... The fact that Chelsea play with that wing-back formation, I think, gives us a little bit of scope to play with uh, a more attacking option in Hakimi. We don't have any other options um, in terms of uh, right-back. Carrere is no longer registered for the Champions League, so um, we could be left a little sh short there if something were to happen to Hakimi. But um, aside from that, we are going to head on into this let's get the players let's get the players ready for this so let's uh, go again as we did for Manchester United that the media has given them a lot of credit lately I love how the players just seem to really respond to being looked at positively in the media as if that's like all there is that's important to them in their lives um, let's get into this you can see so actually I was not expecting that, but they have actually changed to get Pulisic and Havertz out wide. Very, very interesting. They've kind of shocked me with that one there. I guess I should have looked at that before actually coming straight in. I, I, I guess I should have checked that. I was just so convinced that uh, they would have the two number 10s, but... Um, so let's see if I'm actually thinking about an early change there. Just with that in mind, I am no longer going to try and play out from defense here. And in transition, we're going to distribute to the flanks. Rather than playing into our fullbacks. And with Paredes picking up an early injury, let's get Marco Verratti involved. Still not fully fit, but he has played some minutes now. He has played games, so... Hopefully that is not going to affect us too much. I think Verratti can do it and he is technically our best midfielder when you take his all-round stats into account. So, so just a little bit of adjustment there. Let's see how, uh, how we go now. Hopefully we can repeat the Manchester United performance, although Chelsea are looking the better team right now. They have 65% possession. They do have more shots than us. Let's just get our players a little bit more focused. So Chelsea really looking the better team here. This is, in that sense, a little bit disappointing. They have had a lot more in terms of attempts at goal. 
as Reese James takes his free kick and off the bar. What do we do here? Because while it is... Do I play perhaps a little bit more through the middle? I mean, we have got to half time at nil nil. Let's see if we can just tell them. I really don't like any of these options for the half time team talk here. It's time for everybody to dig in. Let's see how they respond to that. Not bad. What shall we do here? So, all right, so we've got the players very nicely motivated for the second half. Let's just see how things go. And what options do we have? Because Chelsea are well on top in this game. I did forget just to show you there. Their last couple of results. They are on a bit of a bad run, but they have had extremely tough fixtures. Um, but here they are looking very comfortable. They are looking comfortably better than us. I don't want to play more through the middle. I do feel like with their three centre-backs, we do have to try and use the wings. Sergio Ramos, well forward there. Very well forward. Which perhaps when you're dealing with Lukaku is not ideal to get so out of position. Don't want to get caught in the counter-attack there, but this is a really nice move. And Messi off the bar. Nobody following him. Messi, uh, Neymar didn't follow in. Icardi didn't follow in. Could have been a very good opportunity. We still haven't had a shot on target. Let's just make a couple of changes here. Neymar's getting pretty tired. He is still recovering from an injury. Let's get Mbappe in there. And what other options do we have? Do I go with the number 10 and try to win this? Marco Verratti has not performed well since coming in. Do I throw caution to the wind by bringing in a number 10? It kind of feels like as much as they've been on top, they haven't really troubled us. But am I just happy to get out of here with... The nil-nil, perhaps. Um, I think I'm going to do it. Let's get Idrissa Gay off. Angel Di Maria is going to come in as the advanced playmaker in the number 10 position. Let's see if we can... Let's see if we can cause them a few little problems with that change there. Let's see how it goes. So Mbappe and Di Maria are on. Really going for it now. Let's see what we can come up with. And it might be that we have to make that change if this results in a goal. It's the first time they've really got at us in the entire game. Well dealt with, dealt with in the end. And I think it was Adrissa Gay there that got the final challenge that knocked it out for a corner. So a couple of... We can't make any more shouts at the moment. A couple of positive substitutions from us still can't make any shouts it's kind of making me nervous i want to kind of try and affect things that on the field a little bit more and chelsea now will they be able to exploit the fact that we don't have that defensive midfielder they woof. well done donnarumma probably a, a poor finish from lukaku di maria in that forward position, just giving us a little bit more presence up there towards their box, making us a little bit more dangerous. Now Sergio Ramos forward again. Would really like to see him respect his position a little bit more, especially with Marquinhos also up there. And is that going to be onside from Mbappe? I think he might have been off. Would be beautiful if we could actually get the goal here, but it is disallowed. Yeah. It it looked like a tight one. It looked a tight one, but he is just off. What a shame. 
Now we can demand more. The last five minutes, do we now start to time waste? Do we start to be happy with the nil-nil? I mean, it's still a very, very good first leg result. Di Maria getting involved there and we've got Mbappe away again. Really seems to have lined things up and that is a miss from Lionel Messi. I thought it might have been a save at first, but that is a fantastic opportunity we've missed there. We're just going to get Ramos to Mark Lukaku. Well, now it's Timo, Timo Werner for the end of the game. Get him to just mark him just to get a little bit tight, tighter on, on them for the last few minutes. Let's start the time wasting. Take the overlaps off. And in transition, we are just going to start holding our shape, not commit forward to the counter-attacks. Looks like uh, Marquinhos and Sergio Ramos have certainly been eager to get involved. We're going to just keep them in their positions now. A number of players looking pretty tired, but we're not going to make any more changes. And that's a decent first leg result. I'm very pleased with that all in all. Got to be pleased with that. Um, we didn't have a shot on target, which normally would be obviously disappointing. But in um, the away leg of a Champions League semi-final, I think we can be very pleased with the result in the end. Um, I, I feel like we'll cause them a lot more problems at home. The big decision is going to be, do we go with Idrissa Gay at defensive midfield again? Or do we start with our number 10? Do we think they'll play the same formation with a 5-2-3? A, a, a or do we think they'll go with those two number 10s behind Lukaku? Uh, we will have to find out. For now, we are going to go forward to the Strasbourg game. I think um, we are going to change up our team completely to keep the uh, the first team fresh for the second leg of the Chelsea game. So it might not be the game where we tie the title up. If um, if maybe Strasbourg, who are on a very good run, if we just take a look at uh, Ligue 1, Strasbourg have had an excellent second half of the season. You can see that they are in contention for the Champions League. So they are a very, very good team. This is not going to be an easy game at all, particularly as we're planning to rest the first team players. So I can imagine it being tough to get a result here. Uh, I think what we'll do, we'll um, we'll have the game, we'll have the game recorded, and if it's uh, if it's worth coming back for towards the end of the game, then we will uh, we will do that. But for now, we'll go forward, and if uh, if all goes to plan, we'll show you how the title finishes up. Uh, but then we will be back for the Chelsea game at home in the second leg of the Champions League semi-final. 